who do you believe is literally evil? David Miscavige, the leader of the Church of Scientology. Kenneth Copeland, the mega pastor who looks like a demon wearing a person suit. Nothing about that man seems remotely good and I have no idea how he continues to convince people to hand over millions of dollars. Kenneth Copeland. Ian Watkins from the band Lost Prophets. He's dead now, but Saddam Hussein's eldest son Uday Hussein was one of the most sadistic, cruel, violent and predatory humans in existence. He tortured, sexually abused and murdered countless people out of pure spontaneous rage and bloodthirst. His wiki article is super dark and full of insane stories. Under the section, Partying, it describes show he'd force his friends to stand against AWOL and consume drinks of 90% alcohol and drugs in 10 minutes, and punishment for not doing so involved shaving your eyebrows off, beatings and whippings. Definitely one of those kinds of people who actually deserve to be killed. Anyone who practices hurt core, Peter Scully, Ian Watkins, Josh Duggar, that ilk. Literal human mildew in my eyes. I like imagining remorse and redemption arcs for people. I like imagining someone who's committed a heinous crime trying their best to reform and atone for what they've done, even if they know they won't succeed and some will never forgive them. As long as they at least see they've done wrong, this is where I draw the line. I don't care how remorseful or regretful you are. DeSantis. I guess Putin has to be up there. You know, with Hitler, the more I learn about that guy, the more I don't care for him. Epstein. You just know. The Sackler family. Ted Bundy. Gertrude Banaszewski, the caregiver of Sylvia Likens. Her story still gives me chills. Health insurance denying treatments that your doctors have personally recommended. Health insurance companies insisting that you try other treatments first, or insisting that you work with in-network doctors who can't be seen for six to eight months, intentionally delaying your proper treatment. It's ucking murder as far as I'm concerned. I could keep listing ways that the health insurance industry is pure evil. What is the most intoxicated you have ever been? I know I have been to Las Vegas. I do not remember ever being in Las Vegas. Years ago, backpacking on my own in Berlin. Had been out on one of those bar crawls that are retargeted at people just like me at that time. The final stop was one of those multi-level clubs that Berlin is famous for. I was wasted and time to call it a day. I stumbled out of the club and found my way to a taxi. I hop in the back of the cab, and in. My thickest drunkest Australian accent declare, Seinfeld place please. After a bit of drunken back and forth, we managed to figure out that I probably meant, Seinerfeld or Platz. 90 euros later, I'm pretty sure I fell asleep in the cab, and the driver dropped me off at the station. I spent the next 45 minutes wandering up and down the street with a fold-out map out in front of me trying to figure out where I was and why I couldn't find my hostel. At least two different people came up to Mado see if I was okay or needed help. I finally found my hostel. Directly across the street from where the cab had dropped me. 0.38 on a breathalyzer. The breathalyzer was both the best and worst purchase I made in college. Waking up in a house I didn't recognize, with a girl that didn't live there either whose name I didn't know, with my pants in a car that didn't belong to any of us. I woke up in a treehouse three doors down from my house with a crocheted shawl and a pampered chef stoneware 8x13 bakeware. About six drinks in I bet some cocky douche that he could not knock me out with a single clean punch. I barely won and proceeded to drink the pain away which led to falling through a coffee table and falling asleep in a bathtub while my EMT friend checked on me all night. The hangover lasted for days. Had alcohol poisoning. Passed out in the snowbank in minus 30 weather. Thankfully someone found me soon after. My fingers and the tip of my nose are sensitive to cold but it's no frostbite. I left a party with a bottle because a girl I liked made out with someone else. Eventually walked back and fell asleep in the boat my buddy's dad had out front because I didn't want to go back inside the party. Woke up getting poked with a broom and told to get out. Had climbed into a neighbor's boat severe streets down. Recovering alcoholic here. When I got sober, I had to go to the hospital to be medically detoxed. I felt 100% sober, and I tested at a 0.34 BAC, which is enough to kill most people. It was around this time that I promptly had a seizure, fell into a coma for three days, then never touched alcohol again. ETA at this time in my life, I was drinking 40 shooters of fireball a day, which was around one half agalon of whiskey. I had my parents take me to the hospital because I couldn't eat, ulcers in my esophagus I could still drink. I was losing my eyesight, and I was trying to dry out on my own. 
I was experiencing delirium tremens as well. I have been sober for two years, and I have end stage. Cirrhosis at 35. Edit FAQ. I will need a transplant at some point in my life, but I'm doing really well and probably won't need it for 10 plus years. I do not have diabetes. I stayed sober because the process of getting sober was some of the worst pain I've ever been through and I'd rather not do it again. I don't have cravings anymore. Fireball was my drink. Of choice, but I'd drink anything. The 40 a day thing didn't happen until the last 3 to 4 months, but before that I was still drinking close to a shooter an hour. My body was physically addicted, and I hated drinking for the last 2 years. If you're struggling, please seek medical attention. Medical detox saved my life. If someone offered you a box of everything you ever lost, what would you look for first? When I was 10 my grandmother gave me a small bag of gems. It was one of the few things she actually gave me after my cousins were born. In it was a small piece of hematite. The paper that came with the bag explained what the different gems were and what they meant. The hematite supposedly protected from bleeding. Ten-year-old me put that in my pocket and carried it with me everywhere. I carried that piece of hematite for 30 years in my pocket. I'm 40 now. Went on a trip last year and the shorts I was wearing developed a hole in the pocket that I was not aware of. The hematite fell out somewhere in my journey and I lost a 30-year-old friend. I'd look for that first. The issue is that I can't recall what I've lost. My nose like WTF some guy stole it at my third birthday. Never got it back. If all the characters were completely naked for the duration what TV show or movie would you immediately want to start watching? Wipeout. Cars. How has no one said the mummy yet? And you know which one I mean. The Muppets. And hash X200B. Could we still tell who was who from the hands alone? Mad Men. 79% for Christina Hendricks, the rest split between John Hamm and January Jones EDIT, and how could I forget Alison Brie? Scrubs for sure. They had so many hot extras and minor cast on that show edit, minor cast, as in minor roles zipper mouth face. The Olympics. A few years ago there was a television series in France where all the actors and actresses wear naked throughout. Here's the pitch. In 2026, a radical change requires everyone to live naked in a pacified and peaceful France after the vote on the transparency law. But the murder of the instigator of this law, found dressed, revives tensions. The investigation is entrusted to Inspector Lucy, Malia Roman, who collaborates with her ex-partner Franck Fish, Satya Dusadi, who has just come out of an eight-year coma and who must adapt to this new situation. As crazy as it may seem, it was broadcast in the early evening at 9 p.m. without access restrictions with just a warning at the start of each episode. It may have been allowed because there is no sexual intercourse. Strangely after the awkward first 30 minutes we are taken by the story and we quickly forget the nudity. Two Broke Girls. The live-action Scooby-Doo movie. Sarah Michelle Gellar and Linda Cardinelli are hot fire. What is the hardest part of dating after 30? Dating after 30 is like catching a city bus after midnight. There aren't as many, but they are faster. You have your preferences narrowed down a lot more than you did in your 20s, thus finding a compatible partner is more difficult. Especially if you dislike kids. Realizing that the number of single parents is larger than you'd expect. Jesus. As a 24-year-old who isn't very good at dating already, this is depressing. Kids. Whether you have them or not, is something Toby talk and consider immediately before starting anything. Online dating sucks and all.my friends are married or dead or single fathers. So I am on my own fourth most part. For me it was finding someone who didn't have kids, and didn't want them. At that point in my life, I was, and still am, 100% sure I don't want kids. Finding a long-term partner who wants the same was pretty tough. It's not all fun and games anymore. People feel late or behind. First dates often. Are we compatible? Do you want kids? Are you okay with my kids? Are you ready for a serious relationship? Do you make enough money? Do you own a home? Politics? Religion? I don't have time to mess with you if we aren't a match because I'm in my 30s and supposed to be married AD having kids. The days of just light fun dating are less common. What would be your reaction if you encountered a nude hiker? Depends. A hiker with hiking boots, shoes and a backpack, but otherwise nude, or a completely nude person on a hiking trail. Scenario 1. I give a friendly wave and hike on. Scenario 2. I give a more tentative wave and hike on maintaining a heightened awareness of my surroundings. 
I would assume it was someone trying to make sexually explicit content. The internet has taught me, in that situation, to take my pants off and take my COC, keep walking. I would keep walking. Hello there. I have passed two nude hikers in my 35 years of hiking. One male, one female, years and thousands of miles apart. Both said, hello. I said, hello. One mentioned the trail was washed out ahead but a second trail has been cut. I thank them for the heads up. Some people like the wind and sun on their skin. Both had on hiking boots. To each their own. Oh.